name is Gabriel Storing, and uh, I'm, I live in Redondo Beach, California, which is the, just southwest of Los Angeles. I'm uh, 39 years old, almost 40. How did I end up in being here in Chad? It, it uh, started, yeah, a little bit less than a year ago um, when I was driving around with my then eight-year-old daughter. And uh, as we were driving around running errands, we, uh, we would talk about um, what could we do to help more people. When I started hearing about the anniversary of the, the 10th anniversary of the genocide in Rwanda, and going through all the emotions of hearing that uh, and knowing that back in 1994 I had heard about it and uh, and I, I really didn't do anything. I mean. The Darfur region of Sudan is in, on the western side of Sudan and it's, uh, it's been a place of where uh, different tribes have lived for generations, you know, uh, hundreds of years. And they've, they've stayed somewhat isolated from the rest of the country and, and the, the, the central government and, and where they have control, it's, uh, it's considered a, an Arab uh, Muslim um, region. The, the way the, that the people in power see them is that they see them as black, uh, black Africans and, and, they, and, the, and the people in power consider themselves Arab uh, Muslims. It's really a small group in power. They, they are the ones that are trying to impose the, their rule in the area of Darfur. And to fight this, a, a small rebel movement arose. And in 2003, they, they you know, did a few skirmishes here and there, and that that's where the Sudanese government used that as an excuse to just go in and wipe out the whole population from, from the area. And the way this happens is, uh, as, as I've heard it described in different reports, is that uh, first uh, Sudanese uh, government, either airplanes or helicopters or both, go into the villages, uh, fly over and drop bombs, and then after that, um, these uh, Arab uh, nomad militias uh, uh, ride in in horses and camels and they just pretty much wipe out the village. They, they burn uh, everything that can be burned. Uh, they, uh, try, they kill the men and uh, usually it's uh, rape uh, the women and children and the, the population is just, uh, the, the ones that are left alive just run, run from the village and, and are pushed out into the desert and that's how many ended up in in the camps in Chad. So when I started hearing about Darfur a year ago, uh, then uh, I said I had to do something, so I just had to get involved. And I, can, I, I started just telling my family, telling friends. Uh, I didn't have any, any experience with any type of activism or uh, grassroots type of uh, activism. And, uh, when things really kind of uh, jumped to the next level is when I connected with with the, the online community Omidyar, Omidyar.net and, and there I met other people that were really uh, involved, very caring people about what was going on in, in Sudan and uh, there it kind of, at the beginning it was a lot of uh, talking about how frustrating it was to see that another genocide was taking place and again the world was not responding. And little by little we started switching to okay what can we do about it and, and from there I, I came up with some a few ideas for some campaigns and we all we all worked together and making them happen. What I was starting to really feel a passion for which was uh, trying to get as many people involved as possible and just not stop acting while, while this was going on um, and somehow from from talking the, the idea to come to where the people are and uh, record their stories and bring them back to the rest of the world came, came about. We, st 
started with talking about uh, making it interactive. So we're, we started with interactive activism, a very long name, and then uh, we sh cut it down to interactivism. And then uh, finally it ended up with IACT uh, for interactive activism. The idea is to go to the camps uh, in, uh, on the Darfur uh, Chad border, uh, talk with the people, show the life in the camps, uh, uh, walk through it with them, and, and then also present what the aid workers are going through, and, and uh, put it up on a daily basis on our website, uh, stopgenocidenow.org. Okay, this is our system for sending files up through the web and for our 21 days of IAC. We've been having some difficulty out here in sending out files. We've been able to receive email, but uh, this is going to be another attempt uh, at uh, sending some email. And what it is is uh, some software that goes along with this satellite that allows us to easily upload uh, files, data files. So it's what we hope to use uh, once we're out in the camps. We'll, we'll record, uh, do the editing on another uh, laptop, uh, an iBook, uh, where we have the editing software. Then we know that we can transfer it to this PC. And then from there, theoretically, up to a satellite and to everybody that has an internet connection. We are packed and ready to go. Um, we're anxious to get out there. It's been a little bit longer here in Janima than we expected, but uh, that is to be expected. One of the side benefits has been uh, meeting some beautiful people here that have helped us out a lot. Uh, we'll see you en route.